Hey, welcome back. We're gonna talk about coyote time this time. Not gonna explain it here. I get into it in a minute with some visuals for you. So yeah, just don't skip this one. Again, it's very important. Even if you don't know what this is, you're about to learn. So let's get moving, baby. Coyote time, let's talk about it. So let's go into our create event. Uh, and I guess I'll go under jumping or whatever. Sounds right to me. I'll do this again. Again, I don't care if people don't like it. I do. So I'm gonna talk about two kinds of coyote time. Um, which to be honest with you, I don't really know if, I think that, I think they're both probably used. Uh, maybe some games will use one, some will use the other. I kind of feel like a lot of games probably use both. I've never actually really looked into it, but uh, let's think of it this way. So here's what Coyote Time is named after, right? This, you've seen this, we've all seen this, cartoons. The Coyote Man, he tries to hit the chicken and he misses and, and then he falls off. I, I think the first and most obvious one that you think of when you would think of something like this is exactly what you see here where it's almost like there's a couple extra moments of the ground still being under the character here, right? Right? So basically, it's like adding a delay after the player is off of the ground before the player realizes that they are off the ground and start falling. So that's kind of coyote time number one to me. Uh, and then number two is almost kind of like a buffer to the jumping. And I think a lot of games maybe do it more like this, where the second you're off the platform, gravity kicks in. It's, it's not like you're not on the ground anymore. Gravity is kicking in. However, you have a few frames where you can still input a jump. So you can see how they're different. It's basically how gravity is treated as far as our coyote time is considered. Um, I consider the first one coyote hang time and the other one is the coyote jump time. Um, and I think using a combination of the two is pretty nice. And uh, what I've set up for this project is a very short hang time and a relatively longer jump buffer, you know, coyote jump time. So let's just set up both of those. So my coyote time, I got my hang time. So I'm gonna call this coyote hang frames. Uh, and like I said, I wanted to keep this one pretty low cause it's kind of weird to actually see your character continuously run off of a ledge. And I'm gonna call this, oops, that's not right. Call this coyote hang timer. There we go. And that's gonna be zero. So this principle is gonna be pretty, you know, you can probably tell that it looks pretty similar to uh, da -da -da, our jump buffering stuff. Cause these are basically buffers too. They're just timers that sort of transition in between different conditions of the player. And as far as hang time goes, transitioning from when gravity should or shouldn't kick in. And as far as our jump buffer time goes, it's gonna be my coyote jump frames. I'm gonna give this five frames, which actually when we test these, I'm probably gonna bump these numbers up a lot just so it'll be easier for us to test them. Um, but setting this up the same way, this one is just how long before our, our uh, jumps should be uh, reset over here, right? Remember the if jump count equals zero, then we'll set it to one if we're in the air so we don't get an extra jump. Um, we can just delay that process by using one of these times. So pretty cool. So we may add one more thing to the create really quick, but before we do that, let's look at our code just so I can talk about it. So let's think first in terms of our coyote hang timer, right? We want the player to think that they're still on the ground for a couple extra frames after they've actually, you know, gotten off the ground. So uh, where do we handle that? Well, we do that right after our collision movement, right? So right here, set if we're on the ground or not. So if our Y speed is greater than or equal to zero, which means we're not traveling upwards. And if there is a wall directly below us with one pixel, then on ground equals true. That seems pretty good to me. However, we don't immediately want to set the ground to being false if we're no longer on top of the wall. We want that little bit of buffer there. So pay attention here, let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this part. We'll set it to be true up here, but we're gonna make a new section of code up above here somewhere where we're checking our coyote timers and that's what's gonna be important. When we're on the ground, we also want to set our coyote hang timer to be our coyote hang frames, right? And somewhere else we're gonna count down this timer and once it's hit zero, we'll set our on ground to false, right? As long as we're not on the ground anymore. So you can see anytime we wanna set our on ground to true, we probably wanna set our hang timer to be the hang frames. And there's also gonna be a couple times in our code where we set our on ground to be false. Like for example, we we didn't do it yet, but whenever we initiate our jump, it makes sense that we're not necessarily going to be on the ground anymore. So, you know, we could, we're not going to do it yet, but we could add in setting on ground equals false. And anytime we swap 
the ground value. We're gonna need to make sure that our timers and things like that are working fine. So what I actually wanna do is add a little easy function for us in the create event. So I'm gonna say custom functions for player. And I'm gonna call this function set on ground. And this is gonna take an input variable. So I'm gonna say underscore value equals, and we'll say true. This basically just means if you look down at the bottom here, if you set a function like this, it basically means that you have an optional argument here. If you kind of set it up like a variable and set it equal to a default value. Basically, instead of specifically setting on ground to be true or false, we're gonna use this function and pass in true or false. So for example, over here, we're saying whenever we want to tell the player that they are on the ground, that's whenever we immediately also wanna set our coyote hang timer, right? So, so we can say, if we are trying to set this to true then we can set on ground to be true and we can set our coyote hang timer to be our coyote hanging frames and otherwise we can set our ground to being false right so if we set this to false this will become false and same with doing the inverse we can set our coyote hang timer to be zero. We should no longer be hanging in the air if we've manually told ourselves that we're not on the ground anymore. For me, this is just a really easy way to make sure that all these variables kind of keep track of each other. So back over here, I can just say set on ground and set that to equal true. I don't really have to do that because by default it sets itself to true, but just for the sake of our own readability, right? So now we actually don't have a place where we're telling, you know, on ground to be false. We're going to wait for our coyote timer to do that. So let's make a place for where we want to do our coyote timer stuff. And I kind of settled on up here because remember, we're going to have it interact with our gravity. And that only happens if our coyote hang timer is done. So first, let's add this. Let's say if our coyote hang timer is greater than zero, then what we need to do is subtract from it, right? Start counting it down. And otherwise, if it has been counted down all the way, then we can apply gravity to the player and say we are no longer on the ground. Or I should say, you know, we've realized we're no longer on the ground at this point. So we can say set on ground to be false. I'm just going to label this as count the timer down also. Now we may be adding one more thing to this, but let's just look at it for now. So I'm going to go down to where we set it and I'm going to change the hang frames to 30. So half a second. It's a very long time, but uh, that way we'll be able to show it. So I'm going to run the game. Ah, uh, you see there, kids? That's why when you're making a tutorial, you don't just on the fly add something that wasn't in your project, that uh, in your outline. Uh, but you know what? I know exactly what the problem is going to be here. So problems right here. And, you know, I said a moment ago we were going to be adding one more thing, but I didn't think it would be that important now. Uh, now it is very important considering we added this code, but regardless, we were going to do it anyways. So what's happening is on ground is only getting set false once we've basically been in the air for the amount of coyote hang time, right? But that mostly just accounts for walking off of a ledge. That doesn't account for jumping. So what's happening is we're jumping right here. We're adding to the jump count. So for a single frame, this is fine. It's not out of range or anything. Help ever our on ground variable has not been set to false yet because what happens is we get down here it's not set to false down here remember because we, we moved that change to being up here with the gravity and since our coyote hang timer is still greater than zero it's counting down for those now uh 30 frames and so on ground is still equal to true which means that our jump count got set back to zero which means that once we get down to this code right here it's trying to do zero minus one and there is no negative one array for us but that's why I turned this into its own function so we could set this at any time we needed to. So basically, what we need to do is whenever we initiate the jump, I mentioned this before, but we need to tell ourselves we are no longer on the on the ground, right? Because we jumped. So we're going to say set on ground equals false. That will set our on ground variable to be false. It'll also immediately cut off our coyote hang timer because we shouldn't be hanging at that point. We're jumping. So this is really only made for walking off a ledge. So that'll update us and keep everything fine. Um, if we want to, we could also manually set our uh, coyote hang timer to be zero again if we are in the air. So if we're not on the ground, there's no reason for our hang timer to be above zero. Um, pretty positive. This is a totally unnecessary bit of code, though. I have it in my project, but honestly, I don't know. I don't think it's actually needed at all because anytime we use this function to set this, our hang time is always set to zero. And the only time we set our ground variable or do any of that stuff is the only time this would change anyway. So running the game now now should work and I should be able to actually show you the coyote hang time working. All right, here we go. Uh, okay, so yeah, I got my one, my one jump, all's good. And so if I walk off of this ledge here, I should be able to 
stay suspended for about half a second. Yeah, look at that. And I can jump in that time, see? So again, you'll see, half a second is a very, very long time. <laughs> So yeah, uh, it, this this number doesn't need to be high at all. Um, but there's plenty of instances where this can come in handy as opposed to the jump buffering version, which again we're also going to do that one. But you know, imagine uh, imagine Mario running over like a single space block, right? He doesn't kind of dip into each space; he just seamlessly glides over all of them. And that's sort of a coyote time thing. I would assume that that's how they that's how they did it. It might just be some kind of collision check or something. I don't know, some kind of tile check. But anyways, the point is. That that would be a way to accomplish something like that. And so now if I change this back to two, which is my default, again, it's a two is a very small number, but if you think about our movement speed being two pixels, that's four pixels off the side of the edge, you see? It doesn't really look that weird with only being two, but it does add just the tiniest, tiniest little bit of extra time. Again, it basically what it's adding, it's adding two frames of extra time that the player has to react to jumping off of the ledge very precisely. So yeah, pretty cool. One coyote down, let's do the other one. So now the jump frames. So let's go back into our step event. And the only place that would matter, like I mentioned earlier, would be here, right? Because what's happening is the moment we're saying, oh, we're not on the ground anymore, so gravity is acting on us, we're falling, that's when we need to take away at least one jump if we haven't jumped already, right? So we don't get any extra air jumps. However, we can just do this. So let's say if we're on the ground, then we can say our coyote jump timer equals our coyote jump frames. Again, not the hang time, but this is the jump timer. And then if we're not on the ground, so if we're in the air, we can subtract from that coyote jump timer like this, count it down. And we only need to set this back to one if we didn't do our initial jump, but we're in the air and our coyote jump timer is less than or equal to zero. And I do less than or equal to because all the time we're in the air, this is gonna count down. So this will eventually go below zero. You could clamp it if you want to or something like that. I don't think there's really a need to. You're not gonna be in the air that long, probably. But uh, yeah, that's that's really all that's gonna need. And uh, that should really do it for the, the jump timer. So let's test that out and do the same thing we did last time. I'm gonna increase this from five to like, let's say 15 or, you know, let's do 20, something pretty noticeable. So uh, I'm also gonna and change the room real quick. I'm gonna kind of add a higher elevation for us to fall off of at some point. Okay, cool. So again, I've still got my single single jump going. So uh, if I fall off the edge, yep, see, I got a little extra jump there right when I ran off the edge. And yeah, it doesn't last that long, but I mean, it lasts pretty darn long, a third of a second. So yeah, again, that just gives us that little bit of extra time. But if I fall off really far and I try, Nope, I didn't get it, see? So if I decrease that number to 10, that'll be even more obvious. Let's see, yep, see, not getting it. But if I go right off the edge just for a second, yeah, look at that. Now that's coyote time, baby. And uh, I honestly think that like four or five frames somewhere around there is very, I feel like it's pretty generous. As far as my reaction time goes, that's about when my brain thinks that I've, I'm about to reach the edge and when my finger actually jumps trying to hit the edge. Uh, so yeah, yeah, that, uh, so that should really be it for both versions of Coyote Time. Uh, once again, I have an extra line of code down here whenever we initiate the jump where I automatically set the Coyote jump timer to be zero, but uh, that's one of those things we're looking back. I don't think that's actually necessary at all. So I'm gonna take it out and perhaps my decision to take that one out and the decision to take the other one out that I talked about uh, will perhaps haunt me later on and I'll regret having done that without testing it more thoroughly. But look, the idea here is to use as little little freaky duct tape stuff as we can, right? I wanna make this a really good system for you to be able to do whatever you wanna do with, add whatever you want to with, and it makes a lot of sense. That's the hope anyways with uh, whatever my skill at programming is. So yeah, I mean, not looking too shabby. I'm gonna kinda close up some gaps a little bit, I guess, right? I'm just gonna scrunch everything together. I feel like this probably looks different for both of us. I feel like you're probably watching this on like a windowed screen but I have the text zoomed in pretty big, like full screen on my monitor, and something about it makes it impossible for my eyes to focus on anything. Maybe these shouldn't be tabbed out. I don't know. Oh God, okay, I'm just gonna have to figure that out later. Anyways, that's that. Let's do some sprites real quick, y'all. What do you say? I, I, think, I think that was everything I needed to do that I needed to tell you about to share my secrets. Yeah, so let's just do some basic sprite control because that's fun. Thank you for watching. I hope that you learned something. Pretty good song, right?
that's it. Like I said, next time we're doing sprites and I'm actually going to give you some. So look in the description of that next video for a link to that. And yeah, remember if these are helping you out, subscribe, ring the bell, check out my games. And I'll always remind you, if you want videos early, or even better, if you want the project files for this project specifically and a bunch of other ones, then you can go to my Patreon. Links for everything below. So lastly, I just want to thank my star freaking gamers, Nixionic, Null, Caden Brightwell, Joseph Sandlin, Midnight, Aogio, Christian Donovan, Jazzy, DT, Richard DeLuca, Arya Sparks, Maya, Robel, Crazy Poo Chucker, Harrison, Joshua, Takuni, Ruben Leoville, Moody, Nikel Alexander, David Rivas, NerdBoutique.com, Carlos Acosta, John Brown, Frog Salt, Joshua Hurry, Marco Romo, Howie, Sam Live, Andreas Premel, Bill Lati, AOAO, Amar Ali, Nick Lee, Matthew Carr, C, Mancat, Patrick, Yaskrit Brar, Dean Blackborough, Micah Smith, Matt Lumens, Jonah Newman, Finn Leavell, and BB Samurai. Thank you, you absolute monarchs. You are the best. And as always, I super appreciate it. So cool. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye now.